there exists a place where developers or just normal people with no prior programming experience come to share their ideas of their dream games. There are hundreds of these passionate ideas just stored away in the cabinets of this subreddit, currently dust for the rest of time. This doesn't sit well with me, so from this day on forward I shall put my wicked JavaScript abilities to righteous use and turn the ideas of these brilliant people into actual interactive experiences. But I am one man and there are hundreds, thousands of these ideas at play. All I can do for now is tackle them one by one, starting with Emotional Annual 3478. Truly a name of all time. They write, can someone turn Benjamin into a roguelike game? In the body of the post, they will describe their idea. The boards. There are different types of boards. You always start on a normal Beckerman board where enemy and your pieces are randomly placed. If you manage to win on this board, you go to a chest board where there is a chest piece randomly placed on the board and you have to keep rerolling your dice until you manage to attack slash open it. There is also a shop board where you can buy dice. The dice. You have access to an inventory where you can store dice. Dice. Normal dice, just a regular dice that goes from 1 to 6, you can use alongside the main two dice. Reroll dice, dice which you can reroll once. Copy dice, dice which copies what the opponent rolled on their turn. Custom value dice, dices that don't go from 1 to 6 but rather 1 through random number. These are all the types of dice I managed to come up with for now, but I imagine there being way more unique dice in the game. Miscellaneous, there's a piece which is half black and half white. Both of the players can control this piece. It doesn't have to be taken out of the game for you to win. I'm a big fan of Pac-Man, but I do not possess any programming related skills. So I thought I would share my idea here, maybe by off chance someone sees this and decides to make it. Well my friend, those words age by fine wine. The funny thing is, I'm not even the first person apparently who's turning Emotional Annual's idea into a game, cause their post was made around 2 months ago and on there you can see 3 comments. First person said that they would try the idea out. The second person linked a photo on Imgur with the title Snimok Ekrana, which means screenshot in Russian I'm pretty sure. And the photo seems to be of a Beckerman board with not regular pieces but rather humanoid characters. And the third person said that they would think about trying the idea out. Now, where to start with the development? Let's first make a regular Beckerman and then turn it into a roguelike ass experience. So a Beckerman board consists of 4 quadrants. In each of these quadrants are 6 stretch triangles and all these triangles are the game pieces. First let's create a rectangle that will display the sides of the board. Then let's draw 2 lines in the middle and inside these lines draw 2 more smaller vertical lines. Think of these lines as the hinges of the board. Next let's populate each of the corners with rectangles and cut of their size to turn them into triangles. Next let's add the game pieces and we'll reach the first roadblock. Let's quickly look at the skeleton of the board aka the code. The div with board ID is our outer rectangle. Each of the section divs are our four quadrants. Inside them are board slots, the triangles and inside them the game pieces. Through the code we can see that our game pieces are the children of their respective triangles. Triangles which in reality are just rectangles which use a clipping method to hide parts of themselves. It happens so that this solution doesn't just clip the parent object but rather all of the parent child objects as well. That's why our game pieces are to hide inside our triangles. To solve this bug, I took our board and duplicated it. Inside the board number 1, we will move our game pieces and set its layer to 1. Now, inside the board number 2, we add back our game pieces and remove every other component visually and set this board layer to 2. There is a severance reference to be made here, but I'm not going to make any pop culture reference. Lastly, to cap off the board's look, we need a very flashy color scheme. Uh, I was thinking plain white, but yes, yeah, the Taylor said it was iconic, iconic enough. enough. Now the logic. <laughs> Logically, most importantly, we need to be able to actually move our game pieces. To achieve this feature, we first need to be able to grab a piece, next choose a new slot and move the chosen piece onto that slot. This is the easy part though, the hard part comes in when trying to prevent things like this from happening. We need to set in place logic which prohibits any illegal moves, like moving the enemy pieces, moving backwards, moving on top of two pieces and moving across a whole board. The first problem is easy, we just mark all the white or black pieces with a tag 
are called something like my piece and every time we press on a piece check if the pressed game piece has been marked with my piece tag we solve the second issue by keeping the order of all the game slots and checking if the new slot you want to place your piece on exceeds the index of the slot that piece is currently occupying and the third bug can be fixed by us checking whenever we press a game slot if the children of the game slot have my piece tag or not if they do we move our if they do, we move our health piece to that slot. If not, and the new slot children amount is greater than 1, we mark that slot as banned for the time being. If this slot only contains one enemy piece, we initiate our dark passenger and murder that piece while taking its slot. Now, to fix the final problem, we need to introduce a core aspect of backgammon, dice. Now, a typical dice generally goes from 1 to 6. For us to be able to display all 6 of these numbers, we need to place dots at every spot each of these possible numbers might require. We need 1 in the middle, because it gets used by 1, 3 and 5. We need 2 more in the top left and bottom right corner for every number apart from 1. And 2 more dots in the remaining corners for 4, 5 and 6. Lastly, we just set up logic, which randomly assigns each of the dice a number. And we also set up logic, which detects what dots are necessary to remain to display the current number. Now we glue the dice and the board logic together, making you only move according to what numbers you wrote. Next we add boring stuff like enemy movement, turns and being able to take out pieces to actually win. I'll go into enemy movement in detail. It is true that Beckerman is mostly a luck based game, but it's also undeniable that there is some strategy involved. Let's take a look at a scenario. If you end up in a situation like this, there's few things you'll most likely think of doing. A. You take a piece from this pile and take this piece with a 3, and then hide it on this piece with a 5. B. You protect this piece by moving a piece down from this pile with a 5 and hiding this one with a 3, taking more of a pacifist slash defensive route. Or maybe C. You kill the enemy piece with a 3 and use another piece to kill another one of your opponent's pieces with the remaining 5, taking more of a reckless angle. And what allows me, you and everyone to see these angles is our brain. Now, I do have a functioning brain, but I am dumb. So I don't know how to give the opposing side, the robot man, the same ability of free thinking. So I might have just made him a tad bit stupid. Basically, they just move horizontally from a random pile they pick according to their dice rolls. They don't take advantage of any of your blunders. They just act without any care for the potential consequences of their actions. And thus, we made regular Beckerman. Now let's give it some midlife crisis. You always start on a normal Beckerman board where an enemy and your piece are randomly placed. There you go my guy. Oh, and I made this very basic main menu. When you press play you enter the first board where you and the single enemy piece spawn randomly on the board. Uh, the funny thing I discovered is that your game piece can just spawn at the very last quadrant of the board, which would pretty much grant you a victory immediately. So to balance the game a bit I got some logic on which only spawns your pieces in the upper quadrants and which only spawns the enemy pieces in the bottom quadrant. After winning on this board you enter the chess board. The goal here is for you to land perfectly on the same slot as a chest piece, but that can be pretty tough, so I came up with this. If you reach the very last slot of the board, the direction your piece moves in reverses. This does make it impossible for you to not eventually land on the chest slot, but still, if you're unlucky, this process could become tedious, so I'll just hit the skip button. Anyways, if you do end up landing on it, you need to receive a random dice, which should go into your inventory, inventory that doesn't yet exist. Queue up the inventory implementation montage. Let's look at the game loop now. You always start with a normal board, next comes either the chest or the shop board, then back to a normal board. Keep in mind that every new normal board ramps up how many enemy and how many of your pieces are on the board. And also, now, there is a piece which is half black and white, which both of the players can control. Ok, it seems like we have every board down other than the shop board, so let's make the shop board. The show board is very simple, it's a board where we randomly spawn our custom 4 dice. As you clear out more boards, the prices of these dice will increase as... Wait, prices? Oh shit. Going back to when I did killing to the game, I totally didn't forget to also make it so you gain gold when you kill enemies at this stage of development. Back to the shop. 
Uh, so yes, the prices will increase. So will the amount of dice that the shop will have in their stock and the multiplier of the custom value dice. Your score is how many boards you clear. I added a high score counter in the main menu, which is tied to how many boards you clear during your run. And I'm pretty certain that's a wrap. There's only one thing left to do, show it to emotional annual 3478. And now, presenting a conversation between me and Annual, starring me as me and my wonderful girlfriend as Emotional Annual. Enjoy! Oh gosh, this is like uh, showing your mom a drawing you made in school at like third grade. How do I start? I, I, I can't talk to people, I just I just spend a lot of time making a backgammon game. Y you think I spent a lot of time talking to people? N no. Okay, okay. Probably sh should start with a greeting. Hello. Uh, yes, I, I type hello like that. This might sound strange, but I saw your post on r slash game ideas about you asking someone to turn Beckhamer into a roguelike. I quite liked your ideas, so I decided to turn them into a game. I do not wish to gain any monetary gain or steal any of your ideas. I just wanted to turn your idea into a game and just give it to you. I do have one ask though. Would it be okay with you if I made a video about the development cycle of your game? Thank you in advance for winning this. I hope my execution is of quality. I'll link the game files below this message to open just run the index.html file. Have fun. A few minutes pass, maybe 5, 10. I just kept refreshing Reddit until... Hello. Thank you firstly for reading my post. And secondly, I'm very happy you liked my ideas. Everything you wrote sounds so cool to me. So I'm gonna try your game now. And I don't have any problems with you publishing this game as your own or you making a video about it. Hey, thank you for responding so quickly. I'm very happy you're okay with me making a video on your game. I've just been so interested in your idea and I feel like it would make for a really appealing video. I just hope that the game doesn't crash immediately and that it at least works 45% as intended. <laughs> I'm sure you're making it worse than it actually is. When you make your video, feel free to send it to me if you'd like. I would love to check it out. Of course, of course, you'll be the first person to see it, it's only fair, cause none of this, the video or the game would have been realized if it wasn't for your idea. A few minutes pass. Oh my god, I just played through one round and wow, you really did so amazing here. I actually can't describe it fully how well you did. This is literally how I imagined the game to be inside my head for a while now. And you've gone ahead and actually turned it real. Wow. I just, I can't believe how cool this is. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. This really is amazing. I really appreciate it. Wow. I'm very happy you liked it. I was quite worried something would go wrongly or you wouldn't like it. I'm happy everything went well, but all the thanks goes to you, man. Once again, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for your smart idea. I'm just a guy who just copied your idea. And so on, Lerpland Emotional Annual 3478 talked for countless more hours with cheer bromans coursing through each of their veins. Two big men brought together by their infatuation for the same idea. These two would end up marrying each other and sadly Lerpl would die soon from a drunk driving incident. May his spirit fly high, rest in peace. A beast? Like a Bacamon piece? Even in his death, his jokes remain very unfunny.